I'm going to be talking to Ashraman Bargava, who is the general manager of Air Products. They are uh, provide uh, AI enabled HVAC systems for buildings. And what are where are we going? I mean, there's so much innovation in this space, and new products and, and new uh, technologies coming on all the time. So I'm going to talk to him about uh, what's hap what's coming on to the market. What trends can we expect over the next two to five years? So uh, welcome to the interview, Ashman. Hey, thanks. Uh, thank you, Markham. Uh, so I, I'll begin by saying, you know, when we start looking at market, it's important to zero in and focus on some of the uh, markets that uh, are really looking at, at, at major changes. Um, and I'll, I'll put the focus here on multifamily, uh, hospitality and student housing. These are three and, and even modular construction, uh, prefab modular construction with small homes, container homes and, and even uh, modular multifamily constructions. Now, if you look at all of these uh, market and market applications, uh, the cost of construction is is a big issue, and most of the owners, developers, GCs are looking to you know optimize their costs and 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 get to a, a point where these are becoming more and more affordable, especially with the rising material costs, rising tariffs, uh, a lot of these things from a global supply chain, lead times are increasing, and so on and so forth. So there is a a big focus on the cost. The second big thing is um, there's a big focus on time to construct um, these these uh, buildings and houses. There's um, lead times are going as long as possible, and sometimes you can have small things that can hold you up. Uh, you need specialized trade in the field to be able to construct these. You're having less and less of those specialized trade available, uh, essentially do do so. And then the third thing that, you know, uh, a lot of folks are grappling with is um, uh, homes that are actually resilient. And we talked a little bit about that in the prior interview also. Uh, there is, you know, California has wildfires. Uh, Florida has got hurricanes. You know, you've got natural disasters and things that are happening. And, and you know, you really don't want uh, your homes and, and constructions to be swept away. And, um, uh, and you want these to be as resilient as possible, as durable as possible, and and long lasting. And then you know, um, there's the 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 whole idea about sustainability can't be forgotten. I, I would say that um, you know a lot of the the boat builders owners are looking at sustainable buildings construction, and 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 the way it is, it's not just having energy efficient appliances and and products in the homes. Uh, it's materials of construction uh, that you're using. It is, uh, you know, things like solar panels, fuel cells. You want real estate to establish all of that. So these are some of the key trends that are really uh, and, are, and the problems that a lot of the owners, builders, and 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 PNL owners are are facing, especially in these particular target markets today. It sounds like there's a, a tremendous amount of innovation uh, going on in this space. And and one of the reasons I, I say that is because we cover a lot of different product areas or technologies. And the last five to 10 years has been a significant increase in innovation. I'm wondering about the impact of tariffs on material volatility and investment, because this is, you know, since uh, we have a new administration in the in, in Washington uh, and since January, uh, and there's now we were into tariff wars and so on. How important are tariffs to the cost of these uh, uh, products? Very, very important, right? And they have a direct impact on almost everyone in the HVAC world, not just HVAC, you know, other industries too. And, uh, you know, there are certain uh, products and components uh, that uh, are, are just available uh, and are being manufactured overseas in Asia, for instance, in China and in Thailand and Vietnam. And, you know, really at the end of the day, um, most of the companies have to reconfigure their supply chains, have to reconfigure their manufacturing operations. And that's already happening. Now, you know, we are doing the same because they, uh, companies want predictability in their costs. They want predictability in their cash flow. And with the volatility that's happening, uh, you know, it is uh, important um, for America to may take a stand against, uh, you know, tariffs and, and make sure that we are protecting our local manufacturing. But in the same time, it takes time to relocate supply chains. It takes time to 
established alternate manufacturing and the exposure of everybody's bill of material, especially of uh, components and raw materials coming out of um, out of Asia or other countries is, uh, uh, is, is, is paramount. And they want to reduce that exposure and get more and more localized uh, manufacturing as much as possible. One of the things we've seen over the years, I mean, the building industry has been around for, for centuries, really. Uh, and um, we've seen now that uh, the building industry itself can be a bit of a, a roadblock uh, to adoption of new technologies. Where are builders these days on innovation, bringing in new technologies like, you know, AI-enabled HVAC? So you know it's 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 a hit and miss uh, or to like you point to your point, and and it's going back to some of the trends I just mentioned earlier, right? Um, uh, that there is how quickly can you build things? You know, um, is it is the install cost you know affordable? Um, are you able to you know navigate through the complex supply chains and and manage through tariffs, and and those things are very very important, and sometimes some of the newer technologies take a backseat uh, because of that or take longer time to adopt. Uh, one of the things that we have done uh, really well in just talking to a lot of the builders is uh, when they see innovations that actually hit some of these uh, pain points and, and trends, uh, they tend to gravitate towards it. You know, we have been talking to some large hospitality customers uh, and, and, and corporate level um, and like Hilton, for instance, and the feedback we're getting is, it's not only the AI, ML, and the intelligence that we have in built into our unit, but also the compact footprint and the integrated design that actually is through the wall that actually helps them, uh, you know, reduce expensive closets inside the hotels where you actually store the air handlers or the VTAC units. Uh, they get better experience, uh, but then they can also reduce the size of those rooms by anywhere from one foot to two foot in depth. And, and uh, they can actually reduce, um, Per square foot reduction, they get about $250 of savings. So basically, you can get anywhere from four to six grand of re cost reduction per room in a hotel uh, by adopting some of these technologies. And that's part of their first cost. And secondly, you know, it takes about an hour to install the unit compared to, you know, multiple hours with specialized labor to install some of the other units. So if you've got innovation that helps uh, reduce the construction costs, reduce the installation uh, costs, and 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 you know, uh, and you have energy and um, AI to you know as an icing on the cake, that helps you know take some of those barriers away and and provides a lot of incentive to uh, to some of the PLL owners and the you know developers to start driving these technologies in their in their buildings. So we are seeing that happen. Uh, you know, we'd love to get, you know, more incentives from the government and, you know, like uh, from the utility companies and get tax breaks and, and so on and so forth. That'll actually help drive some of these uh, innovations uh, down down to these markets um, and, uh, and and have the customers, you know, pay a little bit of an upfront cost, but you get a better uh, total cost of ownership over time. Achua, thank you very much for this. Really appreciate it. Right. Thanks, Markham. Thank you for the interview.